Again, we are looking at living like Jesus, continuing our series and thoughts for our adult class. Again, I want to invite you for our mask required service. If you can't come, it's online as well, available for that. We'll be looking at life words and death words according to Proverb 18, verse 21. So that is what we'll be looking at tonight, Lord willing. Today, I want us to focus on, as we become more like Jesus, living more like him, accepting others. Now, you may be thinking, well, I can't accept this person because of what they're... I'm not referring to that. I'm referring to us as people and our differences. And we'll look at examples of that, okay? You know, why is it much easier for us to emphasize our differences rather than our similarities. Think about it when we were growing up, the groupings that we would place people in. Well, that person's very athletic. That person can't dribble a ball. This person's very tall. This person's very short. This person is very smart. This person, ugh, not so smart. This person is well liked by others. This person has no friends. You know, we, we, we're just conditioned to, to focus and group people based on what they look like and what they are able to do, the, their differences, and put them in that same category. It's so much easier to do that and when we realize, wait a minute, first of all, we are all human beings. We are all loved by God so much that he gave his only begotten son. doesn't matter what you look like on the outside. doesn't matter what you can do or can't do. Question number two is this, what, what is prejudiced? I mean, is this wrong? And if so, how can we avoid it? Obviously, prejudice by definition is a strong bias towards someone or something without having any experience or knowledge of it. You know, obviously we can, we can be very prejudiced about someone and we can focus on something that we think or assume not really realizing what it is. And obviously that is wrong. We are judged not unless you be judged. We are not to judge based on appearance, John, in John's gospel. Uh, and so we need to be careful of that. Question number three is this, how did Jesus look at people? And how can we learn how to treat people like Jesus treated them? Well, obviously as we're gonna look in our lesson today, Jesus was available to all types of people. And he broke the different culture barriers socially and gender and whether religiously in the sense, whether they were accepted in the synagogue or not, he was available to all people. And I want us to focus on that. Our first point is this, a blind man. In Mark chapter 10, and beginning in verse 46, the Bible reads, Now they came to Jericho as... He went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude, a blind man, Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of Nazareth, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still commanded him to be called. Then they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise, he is calling for you. You know, it's interesting to me when you study the life of Christ that's given in the gospel accounts, that Jesus had very little to do with people that were popular, people that were well-liked and high in the social hierarchy of that particular culture and society, at that particular day and time. Instead, he was constantly with and engaged in people that were lesser in society. The poor, the downtrodden, and even the outcast. Jesus took the time to befriend them and make the difference that was needed in their lives. Bartimaeus was a blind beggar. And so this was considered somewhat very low under the Jewish hierarchy of society. Someone that was not only disabled, but was led to begging for money for a living. You know, how do you feel personally when someone, when you're trying to get to point A to point B and you're constantly having to see and, 
experienced people holding a cardboard sign asking for any donations because they fell on hard place in life. You probably had some thoughts leading into that particular situation because uh, you see it so often. Many say that this ability, like blindness, were punishment by God at that particular day and time. How do we know this? Well, in John chapter 9, when the man that was born blind, the disciples asked Jesus, who sinned to cause this man to be blind, to be born blind? Did he sin or did his parents sin? And Jesus said, neither. Hearing Jesus passing by, Bartimaeus did what he could. He yelled out. He cried out. And what could Jesus say? What was his disciples thinking? Here we go. One more beggar. One more sinner. One more blind person. Dirty. Begging for whatever he could. Even the crowd interjected and say. They try to warn him. Hey, be quiet. Hush. You know. But here Bartimaeus cries out again. The very same thing that he said. Son of David, have mercy. Jesus of Nazareth, son of David, have mercy on me. You know, Jesus, you know, obviously he listened to him when he cried out the second time. But I'm going to focus on Bartimaeus for this moment. He didn't allow the crowd to dictate his actions. What if he listened to the crowd? What if he kept quiet? What if he didn't say, reached out to Jesus the second time? I think there's a lesson in and of itself with that about not allowing the majority always have its say in what we decide to do and what is right and what is wrong. He cried out even more after he was told to be quiet. And Jesus stood still and he commanded him to come to him. And we find that Bartimaeus was healed by our Lord and because of that second effort being led to being healed and he began to follow Jesus. Again, Jesus meeting a need for someone that others are trying to quiet down uh, and, and, and to dismiss. But again, Jesus teaching us something, know that we are, you don't know, have the power, the ability to, to miraculously heal somebody physically, but we can be available. We can be accepting in the sense of Understanding that we are human beings and understanding that we have fallen short of the glory of God and the need for Jesus. So we have a lot of similarities, even though they're, the differences are evident. We still have some similarities with these kind, with everyone. The second type of person I want you to focus on is the sinful, the, the tax collector rather, in Luke chapter 19. This story is found only in Luke's gospel account. And here again, Jesus accepting what is unacceptable of the society at that time. Zacchaeus was not just a tax collector, he was a chief tax collector. And we know from reading the gospel account that tax collectors were not really popular people among the Jewish people. They were considered um, people that have turned against their own kind, love of money, deceiving, deception. In fact, they're grouped with sinners. You know, on one occasion, Jesus, why is he eating among tax collectors and sinners? These are people that you don't associate with. And so in this particular situation, we find that even though he was considered an outcast, and by being an outcast, probably not being allowed in the synagogue, they wouldn't be welcoming of him also, that Zacchaeus had some interest enough in Jesus to try to think outside the box, just, just to get a glimpse of who he was. To compensate for his physical stature, able to climb the tree to see Jesus. And Jesus saw him. And when he saw him, he told Zacchaeus, I must come and stay at your house. Yes, Zacchaeus, a chief tax collector. Someone who is an outcast among the Jewish people. Someone not welcome among the synagogues. Someone was that was considered a sinner. Jesus said, I must stay at your house. Because it's in this passage that we find in Luke chapter 19 verse 10. That Jesus says, the Son of Man has come to seek and save the lost. I want to tell you something folks. You can't do that 
if you're not around the lost. You can't do that if you're not accepting of others in reaching out to build that connection to teach about Jesus and show the difference that Jesus makes unlike what we see in our world today in the categories, in the groupings, based on what we see among people. So, Jesus came and seek and save the lost. He didn't come to seek and, and, and just to pacify and to associate with the saved only. And so it challenges us as, as, as Christians, as people that are children of God, as followers of Christ, are we accepting of others? Again, not of behavior that is wrong against God, but are we accepting of people regardless of their differences? Do we understand how connected we really are as God's people? That we all stand condemned based on our own merits. That we're all flesh and blood. That we're all made in God's image, bearing a soul. That we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ and give an account of the things that we've done, whether good or bad. There are, different, there are differences, yes, but there are some similarities. And we need to be mindful, mindful of that. Mindful that, yes, we have a lot connected. We're human. We're Americans that are here. We are all sinners. Those are three main categories in our day-to-day -day activities that we are connected to all people, regardless of whether they're on the street, whether they are homeless or houseless, regardless of if they are having issues, they are struggling, regardless of their lifestyle and their behavior. We have this in common. The third type of person that we looked at a chief tax collector, someone that was an outcast. We considered someone that had a disability and it was begging. Now we see someone that was living in sin, a sinful woman. In Luke chapter 7, in verse 36, I won't read all of this because you know the story well, but just kind of pick up on some things here as we discuss this. And again, Luke chapter 7, my phone keeps sliding down. I apologize for that. Luke chapter 7, beginning in verse um, 36. Here's the setting here. The Pharisees asked him to eat with him. Yes, they asked Jesus to eat with, for him to eat with them. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at the table at the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil and stood at his feet, began uh, behind him weeping and she began to wash his feet and her tears and wiped them with her hair and over her head and kissed his feet and anointed the, them with the fragrant oil. Now notice verse 39. When the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, they spoke to himself saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is who's touching him for she is a sinner oh my goodness a sinner touching jesus he's contaminated false in this story jesus is interacting with two individuals one is simon the pharisee whose house that he's been invited to eat with and he accepts that to eat with the pharisee and secondly here is a woman who is known to be among the town among the citizens at that area to be a sinner, which is kind of a, con a contradiction considering they are sinners as well. But that's beside the point. Anyway, she knew that Jesus is at Simon's house. But she also felt comfortable enough to me when I read this, she felt comfortable enough to approach him that she believed that Jesus was approachable. I don't get the feeling that by her coming into this house and doing this, that somehow Jesus would reject what she was doing. That Jesus would say, why are you touching me? That Jesus would say, please get away from me because of your lifestyle. I cannot have you around me because of my reputation. Now, Jesus had a reputation to be welcoming, to be approachable among all people. Again, because he came to seek and save which is lost 
She ignored all her social cues and she poured her devotion onto Jesus. She kissed his feet. She washed them with her tears and anointed them with expensive oil. Again, imagine the environment at that particular setting and time or around our Lord in that particular moment. Everyone looking with disgust on their face because they knew of her reputation. We're even told in the text that the Pharisee, the one who's the get the host at his house saying, if he was a prophet, he would know that she is a sinner and it is known that she is a sinner. My friends, Jesus was different. He forgave her. And he commended her for her gracious act. We've seen a sinful woman. We've seen a tax collector man who is an outcast. And we see another man who is blind and begging. All three are different. But all three are the same in the fact that they desperately needed a savior. Jesus. In closing, being like Jesus means that we accept others even though they are different than us. I'm not saying that we accept sin. I'm saying about the people and who the people are, regardless if they look different than us, regardless if their profession is different than us, regardless if we have nothing in common, regardless if they have little or lot, whatever the situation. Our Lord met all kinds of people, and yet he showed compassion and grace. And that didn't affect who he was. That didn't contaminate him. That didn't make him to be a sinful person. He didn't condone their sinful acts. He didn't approve of their lifestyle and reputation. But he embraced them in their differences to reach them. Again, I can't stress this enough by accepting others. This doesn't mean that we condone sinful practices. That's not what I'm advocating by this lesson. And that's not what Jesus showed us, but rather loving the person. And we can do that even though that person is in sin because we want the same to us who also sins. Being a friend to them was more effective than condemning them like the Pharisees. Think about that. The way Jesus reached them was more effective than having the approach that the Pharisees had. Because if they had the same approach as the Pharisees, then I'm afraid these people wouldn't become who they were in the text and begin to follow Jesus. It's so important for us to understand that our way of life is not dictated by the majority, is not dictated by what culture says and what to do and not to do, but what Jesus has done and shown us. Again, our whole lesson thought is to becoming more like Jesus. That is the objective. Thank you for your attention. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. Thank you for this opportunity that we have to study Jesus and his great example. And there's just so many applications and things that we can gather. The way he accepted us and by the differences of us and not holding that accountable in a sense to where because you're blind, because you're an outcast, because you're you are, you're living in sin that I cannot associate, I cannot talk, I cannot do anything. It's, it's, it's a great, powerful lesson, Father. Help us to understand that even though we, we can see the differences, that we have some similarities. We're all human beings. We're all flesh and blood here on this earth. We are all citizens of a different country, citizens of here, whatever country we belong to, and we are sinners who needed a Savior to be forgiven. That is universal. And help us to be mindful of that. We thank you so much for loving us and being good to us. We thank you for this day. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen.